Modal interchange is the theory behind a lot of very common chord progressions, as well as some more exotic, jazzier chord progressions as well. Let's start with the fundamentals by writing a chord progression in the key of C major. So the chords we've got to choose from that belong to the key of C major are C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished and C. And we'll choose a really standard common chord progression. Let's do a 1, 6 minor, 4 and 5. And that's a really common chord progression but it can be a little bit predictable a little bit cheesy, let's spice things up a bit and make it a little bit more interesting by using this modal interchange. Now modal interchange happens when you borrow chords from a parallel mode. Don't let the term parallel mode scare you, it's really simple, it just means different scale, same root note. So for instance, C minor would be a parallel mode of C major because it's a different scale, one's major, one's minor, but it's the same root note, C major, C minor. They have the same root note. So that's all parallel mode means. And what we're gonna to do to create this modal interchange is borrow chords from the key of C minor. That's all that happens. That's what modal interchange is. So the chords we've got to choose from that belong to the key of C minor are C minor, D diminished, E flat, F minor, G minor, A flat, B flat, and back to C minor. Um, so we're just going to borrow chords from that key. Let's replace the chord in the second bar, the A minor, the 6 minor chord. We'll replace it with the flat 3, E flat from the key of C minor. Um, and I'll play them side by side so you can hear the difference. So first I'll play it with the 6 minor, the A minor. Sounds pretty standard. Now I'll play it with the flat three, the E flat. Sounds a little bit edgier already. So let's take it even further by replacing the chord in the last bar, the G, with uh, the flat six and the flat seven. So that's B fl uh, A flat and B flat. So here it is. starting to sound pretty cool. This is a really common way of using modal interchange. I've put a link in the description to a PDF that you can use uh, that has all the major keys written out alongside their parallel minor mode so that you can experiment with writing your own chord progressions using modal interchange. Just remember though that modal interchange only happens when you borrow chords from a parallel mode. If you take those chords and use them without returning to the original key, that's going to be a key change or a modulation instead. Modal interchange can be used in more advanced ways as well, but before we get into it, do remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you find it useful, just because I have no other way of really knowing whether you find this stuff useful or not. Um, getting back to modal interchange, the easiest way of making it sound a bit more advanced is just to put seventh chords, um, or extend at least to the seventh, you can extend them more if you want. Um, and that will give you an immediate jazzier sound. The other thing we can do is not just use uh, chords from the parallel minor, that Aeolian mode, but borrow chords from all the other modes as well. So Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, all of those are available to us and it's still modal interchange. You can really experiment to find your own sound with this stuff and I encourage you to. There's a link in the description of this PDF so that you can experiment and find which progressions you really identify with and like so that you can incorporate them in your songwriting. Let's go back to our chord progression that used modal interchange, uh, but this time we're not going to use triads anymore, we're going to extend the chords up to the seventh, and doing that alone will give you a more advanced, jazzier sound, so here's how that sounds. Let's take it even further, let's um, do what we were talking about before, using some of those chords from different modes. So let's replace the flat three chord, that E flat major seven in the second bar, with the flat six chord from C Locrian mode. So that'll sound like this. Uh, let's extend it up to the 13.
sounds pretty nice. So um, let's go further again. Let's replace the final bar, the split bar, with two different chords. We'll take them from uh, C Phrygian. And let's use the flat three and flat two chord from uh, C Phrygian. So that's uh, E flat dominant seven and D flat uh, major seven. So here's how that sounds. And you can really explore this stuff um, and find loads of different sounds. Some things will work great, some things maybe not so much, but experiment and see what works for you. Uh, remember, you can also start in any other mode as well. You don't have to start like we have in uh, a major key. You could start in Aeolian, natural minor, or you could start in Dorian and have uh, that as your home key and borrow from the remaining modes. So there is, it really is a lot to explore. Before we start feeling all clever about ourselves because we understand modal interchange, it's worth mentioning that there's often more than one way to analyze harmonic relationships between chords. So let's take a chord sequence like C minor, F minor, G7. I'll play it one more time. Nice chord progression. Uh, and if you were to use modal interchange to explain that, you would think of C minor being the one chord of C minor, um, the F minor as the four chord of the same key, C minor, and then the G7 as a borrowed chord from C major key, so um, the parallel major of C minor. So it's a home chord, C minor, and then the borrowed chord, the G7, the five of the key of C major. So um, from a songwriter's point of view, if you're just using modal interchange to experiment with chords, that's a fine way to think of it. Use modal interchange, it works just fine. However, if you're a soloist or you're trying to come up with melodies to play over that chord sequence, it's maybe not the best approach because all those chords occur naturally in the key of C harmonic minor. Um, and those three chords can all be played over with the C harmonic minor scale. So that would make more sense from a soloist point of view. Both explanations can be used without contradicting the other, but the more ways that you learn to analyze harmony, the greater the depth of knowledge that you'll have. And that ultimately leads to you being able to choose the best system that serves the music that you're trying to create. One easy thing you can do to learn more about analyzing harmony and uh, for that greater depth of knowledge I was talking about, uh, might be to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. So um, I do hope you found this video useful. And thanks for watching.